Finally tonight, a look back at the Iraq War, now that all U.S. combat troops have been withdrawn. Last week, Jeffrey Brown had this conversation with four American war veterans about their experiences and conclusions. More than a million men and women served in Iraq and the armed forces over the past nine years in a war that will have lasting impact on them and on the nation. We talk about that with four veterans. Army Staff Sergeant Greg Baumgartner was a psychological operations specialist. He left the military after two tours in Iraq. Major P.K. Ewing is in the Marine Corps Reserves and currently on active duty, recovering from war-related injuries. He served as a civil affairs team leader in Anbar province. Sergeant Kelly Doherty of the Colorado Army National Guard served as a military policewoman helping guard supply convoys in Iraq. After leaving the Army, she helped found Iraq veterans against the war. And Marine Corps Lieutenant Wade Zirkel did two tours in Iraq, including the first Battle of Fallujah. He left the Marines in 2005 and founded Vets for Freedom, an advocacy group that promoted the surge. And I want to welcome all of you to the news hour. I'd like to start with your own experience first. Greg Baumgartner, start with you. How did serving in Iraq affect you, change you? I think the first thing that comes to mind is uh, before we actually went across the border in 2003, um, we were all pulled together into a hangar in, a, in an air base in Kuwait, and we were given a talk by uh, a military chaplain. And one of the things that he said was we were about to embark on something that was going to be the most important thing that we were going to do in our lives. And I think for the most part that that holds true for me. It's uh, other than, you know, the birth of my daughter and, and marrying my wife, it, it is the most important thing that I've done in my life. It's shaped me, it's changed me in uh, very deep and very personal ways. Uh, I think that Iraq is something that I live with every day, and it's, it continues to shape how I do things even to this day, even, you know, five, six years later. P.K. Ewing, what about for you? How did it change you, affect you? I couldn't agree more. It became a defining moment in my life. There is me previous to Iraq and me post-Iraq. Aside from the injuries uh, that I'm still dealing with, the, my personal outlook and my whole, my, my whole persona is different. Uh, what Greg said about this being the most important thing we might do in our lives, uh, to date, that was true. I know that I had an impact on the lives of several Iraqis and on uh, the soldiers and Marines, and they had a, a significant impact on me. So I'd agree 100 percent. It was, of course, a very controversial war. And Kelly Doherty, as we said, your experience led you to become an advocate against it. Tell us, tell us about that. Right. Well, going over to Iraq initially, I was not supportive of the invasion, but I thought maybe we would be able to do some good, so I tried to look on the bright side of things. And my experience definitely did transform me. It get, showed me the reality of military invasion and occupation and what effect that has in people's lives. And then returning home, um, you know, Iraq is something like everyone has been saying, it's a life transforming event to take part in a war and an occupation. And while the actual deployment was very, has been very central in my life, what I've done post that my work with other veterans in trying to advocate for an end to the war in Iraq and Afghanistan and support of veterans' rights has been totally life-changing. And Wade Zirkel, you came to a very different conclusion about the war after serving there. Link up your own experience to, 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 to what, speak, what, what your view of the war became. Sure, Jeffrey. Uh, I, I think I served early in the war in 2003 for the invasion and then in, uh, in Fallujah in 2004. Uh, and I, I and my fellow Marines, most of them, I felt like the war was not uh, being prosecuted the way it should. We weren't doing the things we were supposed to be doing. We didn't have enough troops. We weren't employing uh, the right tactics and the right strategy. So we came home and we really uh, advocated uh, to increase the troop levels uh, and to fight this war to win it. Uh, we also wanted the war to end, but we wanted to, to end in, uh, in honor uh, and also in success for uh, U.S. forces. And can I start with you on that kind of big question that the nation asks is sort of what was it worth it? Was it worth it from based on your experience? 
Uh, I do, and I, and I think uh, uh, military members and, and veterans uh, we're biased because we want it to be worth it. Uh, we've invested uh, a lot of time and effort uh, and, and periods of our lives towards a mission. So I think there's a natural proclivity uh, to want the mission to be worthwhile. Uh, so for me, uh, it was worth it. Uh, and I think the history books will really judge it uh, in the long run. Was this the right uh, strategic move to make for, for the U.S. in 2003. Uh, but I think if you look uh, where Iraq is now, where the Iraqi people are now, uh, and where they were uh, under a lifetime of Saddam Hussein's oppression, uh, I think Iraq is better off, I think the Middle East is better off, and I think the world is better off. Greg Baumgartner, is, is this uh, an easy answer, easy question for you, if I asked the was it worth it question? I, it's, it's a little bit more difficult for me to, to answer that question. I, I have a very complex feeling about it. I certainly want and I certainly believe that what we've done in Iraq, I'm hoping that the blood and treasure that we've spent on this is going to be worth it. And, you know, today's and even recent events with bombings in Baghdad immediately after we leave, I, I certainly am pessimistic about that. However, I am so proud of the work that my uh, fellow soldiers, Marines, and airmen did in Iraq. And I think that Iraq right now has the best chance it's ever had or it's ever going to get. It really depends on what the Iraqis want to do with it now. But I, again, I, I'm very pessimistic about Iraq's future. And Kelly Doherty, you, you chime in here or pick up on where, what you started uh, with your work after leaving the service. Right. Well, I was actually on the same program about six years ago in 2005, and the question was the same, was it worth it or is it worth it? And I would say the same thing I said then, which is absolutely not. I think the question itself is a little bit of a strange question because the reasons for us invading Iraq were supposedly weapons of mass destruction, which I believe were totally lies. Basically, we went into Iraq based on lies, and so many people have been killed, injured, traumatized. There's been so much damage done that we cannot ever really quantify the amount of damage of that has been done. So I think for someone like myself, it has definitely not been worth it. Um, it may have been worth it for someone like an oil executive or a defense contractor, but I think for the majority of the actual human beings affected by the invasion and occupation, it has been a huge mistake. P.K. Ewing, you, you were talking about your own feeling like you <clears throat> helped people there. Yes. When you look at the bigger picture, what do you see? Well, I have, I have a couple of viewpoints on it. Uh, from the bigger picture, uh, there is increased stability in the region. There, are, there is a, a working democratic government there now. And the people there are experiencing a level of freedom they hadn't ever in their history experienced. And from, a, from that standpoint, I think it was worth it. And that dovetails off of my own personal experience. My family, uh, from my father's side, is from Guatemala. And that country has suffered a lot of unrest a lot of uh, rule under military juntas and uh, corruption and things of the same nature that we removed in Iraq. I can remember times when um, I can remember seeing on TV before I deployed the throngs of people that were happy to see Saddam be removed from power. And then when I was there in 2004, 2005, I remember specifically before the battle for Fallujah, the people asking us whenever we went out on patrols, the people asking us, when were we going to get rid of the insurgents? Because we, were, we want to live, we want freedom. I heard that a lot. And that was my own personal experience. But that shapes my viewpoint in that it absolutely was worth it. What about the question for all of you about now and, and in this country? After all these years, we have thousands of soldiers and Marines who, with this experience that you've all had, and they're now come home. First of all, was it hard to come home? Uh, Wade Zirkel, I'll start with you. Was it hard for you personally to come back to real life, so to speak? Uh, it was and it wasn't. I, I was wounded on my last tour and was evacuated, so I spent uh, about six weeks in the hospital uh, 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 recuperating before I was uh, uh, released into civilian society to, to finish rehabilitation. So I had some time to decompress. So I think I had a little bit of a different experience than uh, your average soldier or Marine who one week is in Iraq 
fighting insurgents, and the next week uh, is in a bar room dealing with civilians. Uh, I had a, a decompression time that most people didn't. But I think there is uh, it's a hard adjustment, and this has been talked about a lot, and I think my other uh, fellow veterans probably feel this way that are on the, on the program this evening. Uh, a very, very small fraction of this country uh, is invested or, or is sacrificed in this war. It's less than 1 percent of the overall population, uh, and there's a real disconnect between uh, those who have fought these wars uh, and, and those uh, the rest of America who's been largely disconnected and disassociated from it. And I think there's, uh, within the veterans community, uh, there's a sense that the rest of society doesn't really uh, understand uh, or doesn't appreciate as deeply uh, what has happened uh, in these years since 9-11. Yeah, well, that's a, it's a very important subject. To, to, let's continue on that. Greg Baumgartner, do you, do you sense that disconnection there between the veterans who served and the rest of us? I wholeheartedly uh, agree uh, with what was just said. There's 2.5 million Americans that have fought in, uh, in Iraq and in Afghanistan, and that's less than 1% of the population. Th America has much less skin in the game. And I know people have said that before, but it, it really holds true when a veteran comes home and realizes that they are in a very, very tiny minority. Um, you know, the only other veterans that I really had to talk to in my area of New Jersey were Vietnam veterans. And they were very helpful to me. Uh, they got me through a really tough time, but still there's a generation gap between my father's generation, which fought in Vietnam, and my generation, which fought here. The good news about that is, though, is that my generation is the Facebook generation. So I'm in contact with a lot of my, you know, my Army buddies that I uh, fought with in the Al Anbar province. Uh, but the, you know, the flip side of the coin is, is that there's nobody here on my right and left uh, here in southern New Jersey in the Philadelphia area that I know uh, who had this same or similar experience than I did. So you had a hard, it a little difficult. You had a hard time coming back. I think so. I think so. I, I had a, I felt that I had a, a difficult time adjusting from the Al Anbar province of 2005 to peacetime southern New Jersey. They were two completely different environments. P.K. Ewing, I saw you nodding at some point when you were listening to that. Absolutely. Um, I, I am a reservist, and when I first came back, I had, of course, my injuries to deal with, and they were addressed, but not completely, because some of the after effects didn't manifest right away. You have injuries in the neck and back. In my, in my upper spine, in my shoulder, and my back. And uh, I've had part of my neck fused, I'm going to have the rest fused in, in January. But the, as a reservist, you come back and the whole unit disperses. And you're, le you're literally left alone. And um, your family and your friends can't relate to you. And uh, the camaraderie that you found in your unit is uh, it's, it's missing because everybody has road tripped back home and is going through their own thing sort of in isolation. So it was very difficult to come back. And what do you think about this question of um, shared sacrifice or lack of it, the disconnect that we were talking about between those who served and the rest of the country? I would agree there is. Uh, a great deal of that. I think it's evidenced by the fact that uh, oftentimes the only acknowledgement I get is somebody handing me a handshake and saying thank you for your service. And, and I, I personally feel if you're really grateful, go do something for a vet. Go volunteer for a charity. Go start one. Go help in some capacity. So I do feel that disconnect. Kelly Doherty, what do you, do you, th do you feel that disconnect as well? And is it, do you feel it's a problem for us as a nation. Yes, and I think all of my fellow veterans really hit the nail on the head with this is the common experience of veterans returning is that disconnect feeling like people one don't care about what's happening and are so disconnected and uninformed about what's happening in Iraq and in Af Afghanistan and in the military as a whole and so when we talk about the war being over really there's a whole other war that veterans are facing and when they return to get care for a post traumatic traumatic stress disorder, military sexual trauma, traumatic brain injury, and other mental and physical injuries that they suffer. And it's a huge, 
it's a huge problem. I mean, there is a huge suicide epidemic um, among veterans and active duty service members, and you know they're coming back to one of the hardest economies in recent history. And there's a lot of problems that veterans are trying to to deal with coming back from a war zone. Let me just ask you all, and I'll ask for a brief answer, starting with you, Kelly Doherty. Would you do it? Would you do it again? Well, I don't know. It's not really a brief answer. Um, I wouldn't necessarily change things because I feel like my experience, I've been able to lead it into something positive. Um, but I wish that we had never invaded Iraq in the first place. Wade Zirkel, would you do it again? Yes, sir. That's a short answer. <laughs> Greg, Baum Greg Baumgartner? Uh, I would have to say no. I would tend to echo Kelly's feelings on that. Um, I, I just, uh, not, not again. No, I was offered a third tour, and I just, it just wasn't in the cards for me, and I, I wouldn't want to do it. And P.K. Ewing. I'm in lockstep with my fellow Marine. Wade, I'll be right there with you. All right, P.K. Ewing. Uh. <laughs> P.K. Ewing, Kelly Doherty, Wade Zirkel, and Greg.